Good morning. Always glad to see you, each of you. It has been a full and busy and joyful week. I'll tell you a little bit more about that at prayer time, but got a thank you note. Sabina um, Food Pantry says thank you and God bless you, dear church family. Thank you so much for the Raymond Noodle Supply again. It doesn't seem like much, but it is the most requested item. They use it for a bowl of noodles. They use it in with veggies. Sorry, it's not the easiest handwriting to read. <laughs> they use it at the time when they don't have a lot to pick from. So your gift every time serves to put a smile on the face of the families who need it. Thank you. So I'm not sure exactly which of the members of the team does thank you notes, but they do very nice ones. And we are continuing to collect our Raymond noodle packets because, as you heard, they use them in a variety of ways. Shana was going to make, I won't bore you with the whole saga of the upper room, so we did get one, one more copy of the September-October. She was going to make some copies, and so there are not the bound copies, but there are printed copies for at least the next week out there. I'm hopeful my last customer service call, somehow our subscription had gotten changed in one issue, and I said, no, that's never been it. And she said, well, I'll put the correction in in 10, but the one will probably come first. So I'm hoping maybe this week the 10 will follow. <clears throat> Safe Sanctuaries on Tuesday, October 22nd. I still need a couple people to go with me on that one. I probably will start some phone calls this week. Mom Ho, we had me for child care, and thank goodness Carl's available as backup because I had to yell. And we had eight kids, although one did not make it with us the whole time, and ten moms. So found out one adult back there with two under two with their steps in that slide is not really a safe situation when you don't know how well they do the steps up and down from the slide. That scared me more than the slide yesterday. Not to mention the one adorable little girl wanted to stand at the railing and she was being very happy back and forth that I was afraid she'd do that a little bit too far to whack her head and it wouldn't be fun anymore. But she didn't, so we were good. Um, Save the date, October 29th will be our next Making Connections and there will be Clinton County Agency on Aging with information on ways they can support seniors in the home. And mark your calendars for September 25th. We think we're going to be having a vaccine clinic here with the newest COVID, is that correct? Newest COVID vaccine available from Kroger Pharmacy and they'll be here 6 to 8 is the current plan. Stay tuned for more details on that. We're working on it.
amaze and to astound us. And we stand in need of it all the time, and we're grateful that you offer it to us over and over. Lord, we give you praise and thanksgiving for being our faithful God. We give you thanks that your children at whatever age have committed their life to you. We ask your continued blessing upon Marjorie. We pray for those who grieve. We pray for the Woodmancy family. For those who are grieving griefs that are not as new but are still griefs, bring them your comfort. We pray for our country, Lord, in these tense days. Give those who are wanting to be our leaders wisdom. Let them use their words wisely. Let them strive for peace and justice for all of your children. Guide us in conversations and discussions with our families and our friends. Let our words be spoken in grace and in love. We pray for those dealing with health issues and still struggling to find right answers or just knowing that there are ongoing issues. Give courage, give hope, and most of all, give your strength to them. Lord, we pray for ourselves, for old hurts that might need forgiving, for our own sins of commission and or omission that need forgiving, let us be honest before you and accept your forgiveness that we might live in the freedom and the peace that you offer us. We pray for ourselves as a congregation that we might continue to follow you ever more faithfully in all that we do. We pray for your church throughout the world that they may be active in striving to bring peace and reconciliation in this world that is so in need of it. We thank you and praise you for your son Jesus Christ who came to show us how to live, how to love, how to die, and how to trust in you that even beyond death, you are God and give us new life. And it is in his precious name that we pray. And with the comments of children of God, we pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
And after he had finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray as John taught his disciples. He said to them, when you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, give us each day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, for we ourselves forgive everyone indebted to us, and do not bring us to the time of trial. And then from Matthew, a story about forgiveness. Matthew 18, 21 through 35. Then Peter came and said to Jesus, Lord, if another member of the church sins against me, how often should I forgive? As many as seven times? Jesus said to him, not seven times, but I tell you, seventy-seven times. For this reason, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wished to settle accounts with his slaves. When he began the reckoning, one who owed him 10,000 talents was brought to him, and as he could not pay, his Lord ordered him to be sold, together with his wife and children and all his possessions, and payment to be made. So the slave fell on his knees before him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will pay you everything. And out of pity for him, the Lord of that slave released him and forgave him the debt. But the same slave, as he went out, came up on one of his fellow slaves, who owed him a hundred denarii, and seizing him by the throat, he said, Hey, what you owe? Then his fellow slave fell down and pleaded with him, Have patience with me and I will pay you. But he refused. Then he went and threw him into prison until he would pay the debt. When his fellow slaves saw what had happened, they were greatly distressed, and they went and reported to their Lord all that had taken place. Then his Lord summoned the first slave and said to him, You wicked slave, I forgave you all that debt because you pleaded with me. Should you not have had mercy on your fellow slave, as I had mercy on you? And in anger, his Lord handed him over to be tortured until he would pay his entire debt. So my heavenly Father will also do to every one of you, if you do not forgive your brother or sister from your heart. May God add a blessing to the reading of his word. You may be seated. In a sermon on Holy Communion, John Wesley one time said that we take communion often because Jesus told us to. He included other reasonings in the meaning, but for him it was simple as Jesus said it, so we need to do it. It's as simple as that. We practice forgiveness. We forgive others because Jesus told us to in the scriptures that we just heard as well as in many others. It's as simple as that. Or is it? I've come to learn that forgiving others is not necessarily as simple as that. And yet it is something that we must learn to do. We must because we want to be forgiven when we sin. And we also must because it is good for us physically, mentally, and spiritually. I have found great wisdom, as you might notice by my tabs, in this book called The Book of Forgiving by Resident, Reverend Desmond Tutu and his daughter, Ufo Tutu. I'm not going to share with you all these things that I put tabs on, I promise. I would recommend it as a great book to read. It's very helpful. I want to highlight some important aspects over this next few weeks. I think the most important thing, I wish I had learned how to help people to say sooner as a preacher and leader in the church, is this. When we forgive someone, for doing something wrong to us or someone we care about. We are not saying that what happened was all right. 
Forgiveness does not say that the wrong was right in the first place. I think that is one of the things that gives people trouble with forgiveness. They think they are saying, oh, it's all right. And that is not true. When we forgive, we are saying you need forgiveness because this was a wrong thing to do. It was hurtful, it was harmful, whatever. I think our culture tends to kind of overuse the word sorry, which has maybe led to part of this misunderstanding because I know if I may pass somebody in an aisle at the grocery store and I say excuse me because they're concentrating on what they're looking for. Oh, sorry, sorry. I want to say, what are you apologizing for? You weren't doing anything wrong. I just needed to get past you. And we take it that too. If somebody hurts our feelings and they come to us and it's awkward. We don't quite know what to say. So, oh, it's all right. Don't worry about it. If they say sorry, and, and we've almost cheapened real forgiveness. So I think we need to take it seriously and try not to brush it off and say, yes, I was hurt, but I care about you, I love you, depending on the relation of the person to you. I want us to have a good relationship. And so, yes, I accept your apology, and we will go forward. Sometimes, one of the things we need to learn and accept is that forgiving may be more helpful to the one who was wrong than the one who did the wrong. I got hooked a while back on that silly sitcom, Big Bang Theory. I blame it on my parents, because they thought it was really funny. And I started watching it, and sometimes if I wanted some noise or something, I'd turn on it, did buy the DVDs. One of the scenes that is worthwhile and really stuck with me happened between Sheldon, Sheldon who is a brilliant scientist who thinks because he's brilliant, he is perfect. He doesn't do well getting along with people at all. To the point that some people I've known in my life who have said they've had children or stepchildren on the autism spectrum that are high functioning but don't communicate well, he could almost be a poster child for. So Sheldon knows he's right because he's very brilliant. He has an eidetic memory. He remembers everything. There's a scene with Will Wheaton, who was an actor from one of the Star Trek series, and he plays himself on the show, although I hope they've added some things that aren't true of his whole character. But as Sheldon and Will are interacting, Sheldon is telling him, oh, you are on my enemy's list. Because when I was a kid, young teenager, I traveled however far on a bus. I wanted to see you in appearance. I liked your character on the show because we both had eidetic memories. And so you found it more important to be on Hollywood Squares, I think is what it was, than to show up at this appearance where you had been advertised. So what does that tell you, Will Wheaton? Will's comeback, he points right at Sheldon's forehead, and he says, it tells me I have been taking up space right here, rent-free, for years. What an image of refusing to forgive. We give the person who hurt us space in our minds, in our hearts, Sometimes it plays out in our bodies, rent free. Doesn't cost them anything, they moved on. In this case, they didn't even know it was an issue. So when we cannot forgive, it holds us in the past. It keeps us connected to the one who harmed us, even if it's not healthy for us or they are no longer alive. So Jesus, always desiring our good, teaches us to forgive so that we can live free in the present and not be stuck in the past. We forgive so that we can decide what kind of relationship we will have 
or not have with the person who wronged us. And in a couple more weeks, we'll talk about that in a little more detail. Jesus knew that life would bring hurt because we're all human and we make mistakes in our choices. He knew that we would need to have ways to get past those mistakes and move into our future. And now medical professionals even tell us that holding on to a grudge and refusing to forgive can damage our health. One of the things that comes to my mind, I know it causes, is high blood pressure, leading to strokes, heart issues, and other health problems. Jesus knew when he spoke, gave the teachings to us, that it would be good for us to forgive. I think I may have mentioned this to you before, I just like this say, Tom Hansen shares in a book that he lent to a friend, came back at several places in the margin, at the capital letters, Y E H. And so he contacted the friend. He said, I was curious. I saw you made these notes in several places. A lot of them made sense, but why what does this Y B H mean? You had it several places. She said, it means yes, but how? We know forgiving is good for us. But when we have been deeply hurt or abused or someone that we care about, sometimes that's, I think, harder to forgive, honestly, has been hurt or abused, how do we go about it? The two twos in their book of forgiving say the fourfold path for healing ourselves and our world. They say clearly, forgiving is a process. It's a journey. It often takes time. There are four steps that they give that lead us on this fourfold path. And like the stages of grieving, they're not set in concrete for every one of us, and you might move to one and catch yourself going back at times. But there's four stages, steps, whatever you want to call it, that most of us need to go through to find healing. And the steps are telling the story, naming the hurt, granting forgiveness, and restoring or releasing the relationship. So as forgiveness can be a journey and can take time, most of us begin by telling the story. Especially if you're in an angry place at something that's happened, you might find yourself telling the story repeatedly to the various people who listen in your lives. Sometimes we need to tell the story over and over to unpeel all the layers that cause the hurt. Think of an onion. How many of you have peeled an onion at one stage in your life or another? When you do it and get ready to cut it off, you can peel it layer by layer if you really want to. Sometimes we need to tell the story more than once because we unpeel the layers of the hurt it caused us. Sometimes as we tell the story, we might discover more things that were done wrongly or things about ourselves, which is why it bothered us or hurt us so badly. And ideally, over time, as we tell the story, we might begin to discover some of the motivations and have a different understanding of the person who hurt us. So there's all kinds of layers in just telling the story, too. Sometimes it's not that we tell it to other people. Sometimes it's just that we're telling it to ourselves, or maybe we really even need to write it out. Write it in a letter to the person who hurt you that you are not going to send. Write it in your prayer journal. Tell it to God. If you are stuck, I'm here. There are other clergy in your lives. There are counselors. There are other people who know how to listen and let you share this story. Hopefully, eventually, with some other things happening, you might tell the story to the person who hurt you, and you might be able to reconcile. But we're not there yet. Right now, we're telling the story. Some of the reasons this is helpful is because knowing our stories helps us to know ourselves better. Knowing ourselves better helps us just live wholly and healthily. Studies have been done that show that the children who know their family stories, the good stories and the bad stories, 
tend to be more resilient when a trauma happens in their lives. Telling the story is a way of acknowledging that yes, something happened, it was wrong, it was harmful, it was abusive, it should not have happened, but it did. And I can't go back and change it, but I can refuse to stay trapped in the past forever. It is the way telling the story helps us move to acceptance of what happened. And for some of us, we tell the story many times, and for others, we might find relief in just sharing the story the one time. God made us each unique, and we each have our own needs, and healing can be found though, when we share our stories. One of the stories, they share many stories in this book. I, again, I'm encouraging you to read it, so I'm not going to share a lot from the book. I'm going to share from other resources. But one of the stories I do want to share with you is in here is the story of Lynn and Don Wagner. They had been at Beach Fest, a Christian evangelical festival, with their two teenage daughters, and they were traveling home. And the car, the, their van was hit by a drunk driver going 50 miles an hour in a residential area. It was hit and knocked into a telephone pole. They all were injured. Both daughters lost their lives, sadly enough. Don and Lynn struggled, of course, at that time. They weren't able to speak about it. They grieved. They struggled with anger. And finally, they thought, you know, to really heal, we're going to need to share our story with the driver of that car. She also had her two young children with her, by the way. Her name was Lisa, and she was serving time in prison. She was not only drunk, she had meth and cocaine in her system. And they wrote to her in prison, and she wrote back, can't imagine how painful process that was for all, actually. But having done jail ministry, I know that letters are a highlight of people in jail and prison. One of the biggest things is boredom that they suffer with. And so she wrote back to them. And they wrote back. And they began to correspond. The Wagners realized that they must forgive her or they would never have peace and joy in their future. They would be stuck in the grief and the anger. And so over time, they were Christian people. They began speaking at churches and events about stuff. And speaking of how forgiving this woman had freed them to find peace and joy in their lives. And over time, Lisa got out of jail, and now the three of them go to events and speak about how forgiveness works. So when we have hurts in our life, and we hear Jesus say, we need to forgive, and our answer is, yes, but how? It is possible. It is something that is not easy, it's painful, and it takes time, but it can be done, especially in God's help. It's not something that's easy for us to do on our own. I'm sure this is a short telling of a much longer story, but the tutus remind us it is the miracle of forgiveness. Jesus calls us to forgive others as we have ourselves have been forgiven. And if we're honest with ourselves, we know we need to be forgiven often. Maybe once a day, maybe five times or more a day. We acknowledge that we need to forgive so that we can fully accept the offer of grace and forgiveness given to us through Christ, that we're not blocking it by holding on to something from our past and being unforgiving. We are human, and forgiveness may be a process for us. But taking small steps, even just by telling our story, 
will help us do towards living in peace and joy in the future. And so as we begin to delve into this topic, I invite you to consider in your life, are there things that you need to offer forgiveness for to someone else? Are there things that you need to be forgiven for? I'll give you a couple of moments to ponder and then we'll join together in our prayer confession that is in the bullet and then will be on the screen. Thank you. 